Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over a topic that I get asked about all the time here on the channel. I've made some offhanded remarks over the years, but today we're gonna to really drill down on it and go through the pros and cons of M855 as well as M193, which one you should choose for your particular application, the pros and cons of each, brief history of each, and uh, those sorts of things. So just a real kind of quick and dirty history. Uh, of course, when the M16 was first adopted, there were some big issues with the ammunition uh, once all those kinks kind of got worked out with the powder and the bullet type and all of those things and twist rate, uh, they standardized on the M193, which is a 55 grain 5.56 round. And uh, that was the standard for the American military all the way up until 1982 when M855 was adopted. And there were some reasons why. We'll touch on those here in just a second. And that has been the standard up until very recently. And I know there's still a lot of units out there that are still fielding 855 as a primary round as they transition to the 855A1. So with that, uh, before we go over sort of all the pros and cons that you see here on my whiteboard, it may be a little difficult to see, I understand that, but the whiteboard of knowledge is for me, my notes, not so much for you guys to read. Um, but before we get into that, let's head out to the range and see how uh, both of the rounds chronograph through a couple different barrel number, barrel lengths rather, to see what kind of energy numbers we're getting. And then let's shoot some gel with both of them from different barrel lengths and kind of see what's going on, how it performs in that medium and then come back in and kind of go over pros and cons scenario driven uh, applications. First up, we have some M193 coming out of a 16 inch one in seven twist barrel and we'll see how that does. Now we're switching it out there to the 855. Should note that it chronographs about 10 yards downrange. So essentially multiple velocity is what we're getting. Now we're gonna switch it over here to the 11 and a half inch barrel, once again, one and seven twist. And this kind of uh, simulates a couple things. Number one, how it performs in a short barrel. Number two, how it would perform at distance. And lastly, the M193 through the 11 and a half inch barrel. First into the jail is going to be 855, again, out of a 16 inch barrel at about 10 yards. Let's check it out. This is an example of a few things. Number one, why we have a table sponsor here. The folks at Sportsman's Guide do provide us with the tables and we appreciate that because we break them constantly. Uh, so we have some interesting stuff going on here. First off, what you're gonna see is that it really doesn't do a wide uh, permanent cavity until about, starts to open up right there at the four to five inch mark. You guys can kind of get an idea there. And it came around and it looks like it exited our block right there at the bottom, right around 15 inches, right there. If you guys can see that hole, that is your 855 round. And there's a little bit of fragmentation that came out, but mostly, especially according to that uh, shape, looks like most of it stayed in stock. M193 up next out of the 16 inch barrel. Let's check it out. I gotta be honest with you guys, that's not at all what I expected. I've seen other tests of M193 and the results were quite different. Now, uh, I expected it to kind of come apart quicker um, than the 855 did, but it didn't. And that's why I suppose we do the test. But you can see there, it really didn't start to open up until, sorry about the wind guys, it's crazy out here. Uh, but it really didn't start to open up until about the six and a half inch mark. And the permanent wound cavity went down from there until about the 12 inch mark. And uh, as you saw, went right out the bottom of our table, tumbled out of there, 
Um, so with both of these rounds out of that 16 inch barrel, we're getting a violent reaction in the gel, which is a good thing. Um, so let's keep going. 855 coming out of the 11 and a half inch barrel. Let's check that out. I don't know if it's easy to tell or not on the actual camera, but we had two completely separate wound tracks, which is exactly what I was looking for. Uh, on this one there, the 855 came in and opened up right around the six inch mark. Had a nice permanent wound cavity, stretch cavity down there, or permanent wound cavity rather, down to 14 inches. And uh, definitely had some fragments in there along the way come out, but you can see the majority of that bullet tip intact uh, came to rest right there in the second block. And that is right at 22 inches. So typically what you see and what we would have saw, seen if we actually captured it with the longer barrel, the 16 inch barrel is that that tip there, the green tip itself will actually break off. But because I have lower velocities and uh, just a little bit less energy, it didn't cause it to break apart. But regardless, that is a nasty wound cavity. Uh, obviously you'd want it to kind of open up a little bit earlier, ideally, but that would definitely do some damage, kids. M193 out of the 11 and a half. We'll see. Let's check it out. Again, I'm not sure what you guys see at your angle, but two very distinct wound tracks, which is exactly what I wanted to do there. And it came in and essentially at right about the five inch mark, it started to tumble. We have that permanent stretch, ca permanent wound cavity rather, I keep saying that wrong. Uh, going all the way down to the 13 inch mark and then the bullet itself all intact there, aside from a couple pieces of lead that broke off, stopped right at the 18 inch mark. So again, ideally you'd want it to open up or tumble a little bit earlier, but that still would be a very, very effective round um, for a lot of different scenarios. I don't think I mentioned it, we were out there at the range, but that gel that we were using is from the folks at Ballistic Dummy Lab, so I appreciate them sending it out, but that is obviously a synthetic material, um, so it's not the same as like FBI gel, uh, which of course you have to keep at a certain temperature, you can only have it out exposed for a certain amount of time. So for making YouTube videos, it's very difficult to work with. The stuff from Ballistic Dummy Labs, much easier to work with. It's a consistent media as, medium rather as well, but it doesn't always show exactly the type of damage, particularly with a permanent wound cavity uh, that you would see in natural gel or human tissue. So just kind of keep that in mind, but we'll work through our quick chart here to go over some of the pros and cons of each round. So in terms of penetration, 855 tends to do better in most scenarios due to that uh, seven grain steel projectile out there at the end. Uh, now some folks claim that it's AP armor penetrating, it's not, but it was developed in part so that as dumb as it sounds, it would do better at penetrating a Russian helmet. Um, that was something apparently the military was very concerned with. <laughs> so, uh, but for light armor, it does well uh, in terms of car glass, uh, or if you had like a bad guy hiding behind a bookshelf or something like that, it's gonna do better in terms of penetration than the 193 would. Um, obviously the 193 was going through thick jungles in Vietnam and tended to not do so well and got deflected very easily in those types of scenarios. 855 would tend to do a little bit better accuracy. Both of these rounds are actually plenty accurate if they're loaded correctly and consistently. Um, you can expect two to three MOA depending on the gun out of them. Now with M193, if you guys watch the channel here a lot, I do a lot of accuracy testing when I do rifle reviews and typically I use M193 sort of as a baseline. And there's a number of videos on this channel demonstrating that it can get really close to MOA accuracy. Um, so in terms of the accuracy within 100 yards at least anyway, M193 tends to have the advantage. Now there's exceptions to that. We'll get to here in a second. Um, but accuracy at distance, that's not the case. Accuracy at distance, 855 tends to do better for a couple reasons. Number one, it has a better BC, uh, ballistic coefficient. And then additionally, it's heavier. So the wind doesn't throw it around as much as it does with the M193. So if you start pushing out beyond like 500 yards, you absolutely see those differences. They show up really quickly. And not that the 855 is super great at that, but it is better than the M193. Um, so there is that. Actually at distance, we already talked about that. Soft tissue, fragmentation. Um, so again, M193, 
generally speaking, uh, will fragment much more likely than 855, um, but you can't count on it to be a consistently fragmenting round like some of the aftermarket um, offerings that are out there. Of course, these rounds are military. Military is generally limited to what they can use by all types of rules, whereas civilians, we get to pick other stuff that can perform better, and there definitely are better performers in terms of you know soft tissue performance than these two rounds, but they also do a pretty good job as well as you guys saw out there. The range certainly much better than any of your handgun rounds would do by a lot. Um, so in soft tissue, again, you tend to see fragmentation. We really didn't see it today, but again, it's inconsistent. But when it does fragment, it creates a nasty, nasty wound channel out there. Um, eight, uh, 193 is range friendly. So what I mean by that is 855, because of that steel tip, can beat up some steel targets and as well as steel backstops, which a lot of indoor ranges have, and they won't allow 855. I don't know of any range out there uh, anywhere that won't allow M193. Uh, another reason that sometimes 855 isn't allowed at ranges is because with that steel trip tip rather it can spark more easily than other ammo and of course that could possibly start a fire depending on where you're at and the conditions at the time so that is something to keep in mind cost in general in normal times i'm filming this in october 2021 so i realize we're not in normal times at all but in normal times over the you know, last 15 to 20 years, M193 has tended to be a little bit cheaper than 855. That was sort of exacerbated when the ATF tried to ban 855 um, back in, I think, 2015. Uh, once that happened, 855 kind of had this folklore about it as if it was some magical round. But as you guys have seen, it's not. Um, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's nothing super special. Um, and there are definitely rounds that will penetrate better than it. And there are definitely rounds that will shoot better at distance and all of those sorts of things that are commercially available that aren't military loadings twist rate so this one is again sort of an on paper thing because as i mentioned earlier i do a lot of accuracy testing here on the channel and i've shot a lot of really good groups with m193 through one and seven twist barrels but in theory in the theoretical realm 855 is going to do really well um, in one and eight and one and seven twists. And the reason for that is because of that steel tip on there, 855 is a long round for a 62 grainer. It's as long as most 69 grain loads out there that are commercially available. So with that, the longer the surface, the faster twist rates tend to stabilize it a little bit better. Now, with the M193, one of the things that, you know, they say is it's good in one to 12 to one to nine twist barrels. But again, in my testing, that hasn't always proven to be true in the real world. But one of the advantages M193 has is that when it is unstable, like IE out of a twist rate that it's not rated for, or not supposed to be good at, um, that tends to lead to it yawing faster. And of course that increases the chances that you get fragmentation. So just know that that can be a pro uh, depending on how, you're, how you have it set up there. And uh, with that, I think we've covered most of the important points to let you guys decide on which one you want. And again, just throwing it out there, both of them are very acceptable, if you will, um, for you know trying to put down two-legged or four-legged uh, threats. But again, there are there is better commercially available ammo out there. But if you're stocking up for like you know the end of the world or whatever the zombie apocalypse, well, just take these factors into play as to which one that you want to go with for your setup because they do perform differently, especially in different mediums. So I think that's pretty much it. I'm sure I could go on longer, but just know that. Basically, we've covered the majority of it here. I'm sure folks will go into nuances in the comment section, and that's what that's for. If you guys have questions, you can post down in the comment section as well. Um, you can also post those questions at any of my social media that you see here on your screen. I encourage you to follow me over there. And if you are subscribed, thank you. If you're not subscribed, you like this type of video with the whiteboard of knowledge here. We do these pretty often. And uh, if you hit the subscribe button, you can look forward to seeing more in the future. If you are subscribed and you've hit the notification bell and you're still not seeing two to four videos a week, which is what we do here on the channel every week, um, then I recommend signing up for my email at the website here on your screen. That email goes out at most once a once or twice a month and it just has all the videos since my previous email so that way there's no social media giant censoring your eyes for my content and then if this stuff goes on sale or comes down in cost or whatever the case may be depending on the market i post uh, these up 
on my various social media sites as well as in my daily deals email. And that email to sign up is here on your screen and I send out six or seven of the best deals that I find around the internet, whether it be on ammo, guns, gear, etc. And that way you guys can save some time because I do the looking for you and you can save some money as well because generally if I send it out, it's the cheapest it is anywhere on the internet. So there is that. And with that, we'll end the video. Thanks for watching guys. I truly appreciate it. I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.